Hello, my name is Parker James, author of a Star of Ash series. For those of you who haven't read my novel yet, or are simply curious, here are some of the timeline events that occur before A Child of Magic. You don't need to know any of this before reading, this is simply for fun. The story takes place in what's referred to as the Known World. There is much debate amongst the inhabitants regarding their history, but what's generally agreed upon is this. Over 10,000 years ago, Gion, the goddess of creation, emotion, and chaos, gave birth to the universe, the galaxies, the stars, and the planets, and then even further with the land and water. Umba, the god of logic, law, and structure, constructed the rules of reality that govern things like physics, chemistry, laws of thermodynamics, and so on. Gion then gave birth to plants, then animals, then humans, then presumably demi-humans later. Whether directly or indirectly is up to much debate and conflict. Umba assigned ecosystems, created the food chain, and created decay to help keep the new life in balance and order amongst the planet. Roughly 9,000 years ago, after life had multiplied and spread, division rose amongst them, and there was constant brutal strife, reckless destruction of nature, and poaching animals to extinction. At the rate they were going, humanity and most other life on the planet would cease to exist. Umba convinced Yan to help him create the angels, beings with the god's laws imprinted upon them. The angels arrived from the heavens and began teaching humanity about the god's laws, brokering peace between tribes, creating a unified nation, and guided them to construct the Tower of Babel at the heart of their new nation. After 300 years, Fraxinius, the first angel, rebelled with fellow like-minded angels and humans, which caused a massive war that covered the whole known world and almost reached the heavens. The oil angels recruited humans to fight as well, dubbing them the Sanctus Fenditores. This war would be called the First Grand Crusade. After an unknown period of time, Fraxinius and his fellow traitors were defeated and imprisoned. In order to prevent the other angels from falling in Fraxinius' footsteps, the gods sent them all back to their heavens. In more recent history, a thousand years ago, began what is known as the Era of Despair. Major massive waves of world governments and church corruption began to reach a breaking point, causing many to fall into anarchy or major conflict. Gangs, criminal organizations, and oligarchs began to rise and expand, some being powerful enough to control nations and some forming nations unto themselves. Persecutions of mages and demi-humans have led to genocides and many fighting back with desperate, horrifying measures. Monsters, demons, and undead were becoming rampant in the chaos. Warlords took advantage of this chaos by conquering nations and peoples too disorganized to defend themselves. Moving to the local history of our heroine, Freya's home country, we begin with the rise of the bloodthirsty Queen of Bastille approximately 400 years ago. She was once a simple farm girl named Dear Duke, loved by her village for her singing and beauty. Her father used those qualities to marry her off to the sadistic chieftain of the clan. The chieftain locked Dirg in his tower, never to be seen by anyone else except when he wanted to take pleasure bleeding her. Dirk prayed that her childhood sweetheart would save her, but after a decade, Dirk's hopes had been spent, and she hid her meal so that she could finally sleep forever. Out of shame for doing nothing to save Dirk, none in her village visited her grave to ensure she had a proper burial, and her horrible husband couldn't have cared less. Dirk was forced alive and awake the next night. She clawed her way out of the shallow grave and saw her village below. She began to sing, luring the entire village to her. Unrelenting hunger took hold as she drank all of their blood, and it wasn't enough. She needed revenge on her husband and slaughtered all his men that didn't vow loyalty to her immediately. She locked her husband in the very same tower and had made him her first livestock. Vowing to never let what happened to her happen to another person again, Dirk decided to use her newfound power, army, and immortality to conquer the remaining two noble clans and unite Bastille under her own dynasty. After a decade of bloodshed, Bastille was now one country under her uncontested rule as High Queen for approximately the next 350 years. 31 years ago was the beginning of the Bastille Civil War. It was believed that Deer could hide her vampiric status from the general populace by regulating her blood drinking and allowing herself to appear to age at a human rate. She would marry a noble or prince primarily for political reasons and then use her siren-like singing to make them her thrall. She would have people spread rumors that she had a child and would fake her death at some point and continue ruling through her mind-controlled husband. After enough time has passed, or if her latest husband died, she would return claiming to be the heir daughter after making herself young again by secretly drinking blood, 
and this cycle would repeat. She also had to worry about the Sanctus Venatoris because they had access to the Tower of Babel, which could have revealed her secret. Over her long rule, she tried to absorb the Sanctus Venatoris into the Bastille government, which mostly worked. Many knights were loyal to her, so when a squire went to the Tower of Babel, one of her knights would accompany them. If they asked the angels about Dirg and discovered her secret, her loyalist Sanctus Venatoris knights would kill the squire for blasphemy and treason. One day, a squire, unrecorded in history, learned about the High Queen's vampiric status from the Tower of Babel, somehow managed to defeat the loyalist veteran knight escorting them despite their inexperience, and revealed what Dirk was to the Order before they were inevitably killed. It took a year for the truth to spread, despite the High Queen's best efforts to silence them. Distrust, suspicion, and ambition grew, so civil war began in the country, and it split the Sanctus Venatoris of Bastille into free factions. The Loyalists, those who felt that the gods have allowed her to be queen for a reason, and saw those who disobeyed the queen as not only treason, but heresy against the gods. The Shields of Gion, those who felt that no one should be in control, and it should be up to each person to govern themselves, since it would be arrogant to think that any person or groups of people would know the will of the gods. Then there was the Defenders of the Faith, those who believed that the Sanctus Venatori's order should be in charge. After all, with the Tower of Babel, they knew the gods' will. After two years of war, the defenders of the faith won and took over Bastille. They made it into the theocracy that rules today. The High Queen, going by Ser Leif at the time, was believed to have been killed when they took over the palace. Thirty years ago, during the Era of Despair, many fled to the Arctic North to escape persecution, especially the hunted mages. After making a deal with the local Jarls, they were allowed a small plot of barren land, and from there, the nation of Bavelia began. Thirteen years ago, finally at a breaking point, people around the known world began to rise. Though they were still recovering from the Civil War, the Sanctus Venatoris of Bastille felt that this was the perfect opportunity to help those in similar situations that they had faced. It was also an excellent opportunity to spread their influence and gain favor. So, the Venatoris rallied everyone they could, from peasants to knights to demihumans to giants and much more under their banner as the Divine Militia, and declared their war as the Second Grand Crusade. The Second Grand Crusade was one of the most brutal wars in recent history, and caused an immense change in the political landscapes of every nation. Some would argue it was not for the better in many cases, and some would say the loss of life was not worth what little they had won. When the Second Grand Crusade was over, many countries became protectorates of the Sanctus Venatoris and now follow their laws, which allowed the Sanctus Venatoris to set up keeps in those protectorate nations, restoring and increasing their ranks to larger than ever before. The Sanctus Venatoris now act as the known world police, with Bastille as their headquarters, defending against magical and demonic threats and providing aid when needed. Shortly after the Second Grand Crusade was declared, Barnaby Figgs was credited as the creator of the Figgs Potion. This potion accelerated the drinker's natural healing drastically, reducing their recovery time and saving hundreds of millions of lives. It also prolonged the Second Grand Crusade as soldiers both for and against the Divine Militia would have been able to return to the fight so soon after injury. A year after that, the first Bavelia Living Complex is built and funded by the now wealthy Barnaby Figgs. It is named Figgs Tower after him. A year before the fighting ended, the Doctrine of Amnesty is drafted. This document decided which non-human races could be classified as demi-humans that we know of today, which came with some rights and protections. It also codified how all creatures born of magic shall be dealt with for continued coexistence and required all of them to register or be taken prisoner. Resistance was a death sentence. And then, as far as our heroine is concerned, begins the start of her story, a star of ash, a child of magic.